Buckle up, because today we are tackling a concept that sounds kind of wild at first, all right? It's the idea that setting your sights on 10x growth, not just doubling, but 10 times, yeah. that that might actually be easier than trying for a measly 2x improvement crazy, right? Yeah, it's a head scratcher at first. But this book we're diving into today, right? Uh, 10x is easier than 2x by Dan Sullivan and Dr. Benjamin Hardy. It lays out a seriously compelling case. And it all boils down to like the psychology of it, you know, how we approach challenges and how aiming insanely high can unlock like a whole other level. 10x is easier than 2x. What? I'm not gonna lie. The first time I saw that title, I was like, come on, really? But then I started flipping through it. And bam, they hit you with these stories, like Michelangelo and his approach to art. Oh, yeah. Talk about aiming high. Michelangelo's story is like the perfect example of what happens when you reach for something that seems impossible. I mean, this guy, he wasn't content with just being, you know, good at sculpting. He was obsessed with mastering human anatomy, like to a crazy degree. And he was not afraid to uh, get his hands dirty, let's say. The book mentions how he basically became an expert in, well, grave robbing, to study corpses up close and get that insane level of accuracy in his work. Wild. Totally. And see, that's a key takeaway right there. When you set a 10x goal, something that pushes you miles past your comfort zone, it forces you to ditch your old comfy ways of doing things. Like tweaking here and there just won't cut it. You need a whole new approach. It's like, what's the difference between shaving a few minutes off your marathon time versus saying, I'm going to win this thing? One, you're making small improvements, but the other, you're overhauling your entire game, right? Mm -hmm. Training, diet, everything. Exactly. That 10x goal, it's like a laser beam. Cuts through all the noise and helps you zero in on the actions that actually make a difference. You're not getting bogged down with the small stuff. Speaking of cutting through the noise, the book talks about this business consultant, Dr. Barnard. He uses this impossible goal strategy with his clients. He says, asking, how do I increase profits by 10%? That's a terrible question. Because think about it, there are like a zillion ways to increase profits by a little bit, it's overwhelming. But when you ask, how do I 10X my profits? Huh, suddenly those radical game-changing ideas, those are the only options that make sense. So counterintuitive, but man, it makes sense when you put it like that. It's like having a filter for your brain, right? Mm -hmm. Only the truly big ideas can get through. Exactly, and this idea of clarity, it leads right into another big idea from the book the power of letting go. Ah, releasing what's holding us back. Yeah. And the book uses the story of Carson Holmquist, the CEO of this company called Stream Logistics, to show this in action. He took his company from barely surviving to absolutely killing it, and it started with a risky decision. What's crazy is how Carson went from, like, micromanaging everything in his business to basically freeing himself. It's a total transformation. Dude was a workaholic, pulling crazy hours. But the growth just wasn't there. So he takes this leap of faith and steps back from the day to day, started building a leadership team to really take charge. And that, that right there is huge for anyone who wants 10X growth. You can't do it all yourself, you gotta let go. And we're talking like 80% of the stuff you're doing that doesn't really matter. You need people who free you up to focus on that 20% that moves the needle. And for Carson, that meant this big, bold move that had his team sweating. See, they were used to working with what the book calls routine freight clients, you know? basic stuff. Carson decides they're going all in on high stakes freight, a much smaller slice of their clientele. And boom, that was the game changer. Those high stakes clients, even though there were fewer of them, they had these crazy complex needs that required some seriously out of the box thinking. Gamble, for sure. But the payoff, huge. Yeah. Not only did they explode in growth, but the team, they got energized by the challenge of it all. It proves that sometimes the scariest decisions lead to the biggest rewards, you know? And that ties into another 10X principle, always be transforming. So it's not a one-time thing. You gotta keep pushing, keep evolving. Yep. The book uses this great example of Chad, financial advisor who threw out the rule book. This guy set these crazy high standards for who he'd work with. Like, if you didn't meet a certain financial bar, he wouldn't even talk to you. Which, I mean, that sounds insane, right? Yeah. Most advisors would kill to work with anyone who'd have him. But Chad, he was playing a different game. He was not afraid to walk away from anything that didn't fit his 10X vision. And that's the thing about 10X thinking. You stop defining yourself by limits and scarcity, and you start living by the audacity of, you know, like your biggest aspirations. Pretty cool, right? It's like, you know that saying, if you wanna go fast, go alone. But if you wanna go far, go together. But I guess here, it's more like, if you wanna go insanely far, insanely fast, ditch the dead weight and find the right people to get you there. Right, love that. And that brings us to another piece of the 10X puzzle. 
your unique ability. The book uses this awesome story about Paul Rodriguez P-Rod, the skateboarding legend. Okay, from financial advisors to skateboarding, huh? Keep me on my toes. But how do those connect? It's about mastering your thing, you know? Pira didn't just want to be a skateboarder. He was obsessed with, like, pushing the limits of what you could even DO on a skateboard. Yeah, and, I mean, the guy's a legend now. Yeah. But how's that work in, like, everyday life? My job, for example. It's about figuring out what you do that's unique. The thing you're naturally drawn to that sets you apart, you know? And then you go all in on mastering that. So find your zone of genius and own it, yeah. basically. But it's not all about just talent, right? The book's big on hard work, too. Totally. It takes dedication, practice, pushing your limits, all that to develop your unique ability. It's like setting those impossible goals, but within your own expertise, you know? And I love how they use P-Rod to show, like, knowing your worth, too. This dude negotiated a shoe deal with Nike when he was just a kid. Seriously, and he wouldn't sign unless he got his own pro model shoe. Even with this huge opportunity, he knew his worth. He knew he brought something special and wasn't gonna budge. That's confidence, man. And that's what happens. When you embrace your unique ability, confidence just comes naturally. You're not afraid to set high standards, you know, demand that people recognize what you bring. It's like going from that scarcity mindset of needing every opportunity to like, you get to choose the ones that excite you, the yeah. ones that fit that 10x vision. Yes, abundance, yeah. choosing what serves you. Which leads us to another 10x power tool, time, like how we see it, how we use it. Ugh, the eternal struggle, yeah. time management. The book has some interesting ideas here. It contrasts how we traditionally see time, Chronos time, with a different approach, Kairos time. So Chronos time, that's your clock on the wall, right? Linear, about filling your schedule, checking things off. The daily grind. Got it. But Cairo's time, it sounds like it's more about those moments of breakthrough, like being in the zone. Yes, it's when you're so locked in that time disappears. And the book argues that those 10x achievers, they figured out how to structure their time for maximum Kairos moments. So working smarter, not harder, being intentional with your time. And there's a framework for this in the book, right? There is. It's about organizing your time around three types of days. Free days, focus days, and buffer days. Okay, I'm listening. Break those down for me. Free days are all about you. No work allowed. You recharge, let your mind wander, make space for creative breakthroughs. Sounds amazing. No emails, no calls, just dot relaxation, <laughs> brainstorming. Exactly. Giving your mind space to wander is crucial, according to book. That's when you get those big aha moments. Your subconscious working on things while you're like on a hike or something. <laughs> okay, I'm into this. What about focus days? Focus days are for, well, focusing. This is your deep work time, heads down, no distractions, tackling your most important tasks. Ideally, stuff that uses your unique ability. Makes sense. Deep work day. Then what are the buffer days all about? Buffer days are like the bridge between the other two. This is for catching up on emails, planning, organizing those essential tasks that don't need peak creativity, but still need to get done. So you create a flow to your week. Yeah. You know, intense focus, intentional rest. I like it. But what about those of us with a nine to five? Can we apply these principles too? You absolutely can. It might take some creativity, but the core idea is the same. Even if you can't dedicate entire days, you can carve out blocks of time for focused work, for planning, for breaks. Being mindful of your hours, making them count towards your 10x goals. Now the book also mentions this idea of building a self-managing company. What exactly I is that? Picture a company that basically runs itself. Okay. Maybe not completely on autopilot, but with you not needing to like micromanage everything all the time, that's a self-managing company. So building a team that can make decisions without running everything by you. Yes. And that frees you up as the leader, the entrepreneur, to focus on the big stuff, the vision, innovation, the stuff that really moves the needle. They use this really inspiring example, Tim Schmidt, who founded the U.S. Concealed Carry Association of the USCCA. He built this multi-million dollar organization, started at his kitchen table by using this principle. Such a good story. Tim went from micromanaging everything to empowering his team to take ownership to run things themselves. And that let him step back, focus on strategy, and you know, his own growth too. So it's about being a true leader, not just a manager. Yeah. Right? And inspiring your team to get on board with that 10X vision.